SN2 reactions involve nucleophilic substitution at an sp3 hybridized carbon. They occur in a one-step mechanism in which the nucleophile and electrophile collide with each other so that the homo of the nucleophile, usually a lone pair, overlaps with the lumo of the electrophile, the sigma star orbital between the carbon and the leaving group. Like all nucleophilic substitution reactions, the SN2 reaction requires a good leaving group. And just like leaving groups in nucleophilic acyl substitution, we can get a sense of how good a leaving group is by examining its conjugate acids, pKa. For the SN2 reaction, the conjugate acid of the leaving group really needs to have a pKa of about 10 or below. And, like all nucleophilic substitution reactions, the stronger the nucleophile, the more favorable the SN2 reaction. In general, SN2 reactions usually work best with quite strong nucleophiles, those with very high energy homos. Most of the time, the nucleophile in an SN2 reaction has a negative charge. These two factors, leaving group ability and nucleophilicity, affect the thermodynamics of SN2 reactions. The better the leaving group, the lower the energy of the product, and the stronger the nucleophile, the higher the energy the reactants. But one more factor is even more important than these two thermodynamic ones. In order for an SN2 reaction to occur, the activation energy barrier must be relatively low. This is a kinetics consideration. It must be pretty easy for the reactants to collide with each other in the proper orientation so that the homo of the nucleophile and the lumo of the electrophile can effectively overlap. This means that anything that gets in the way of these orbitals overlapping really hampers the reaction. We say that this reaction is sensitive to sterics, the size and bulk of the groups surrounding the reactive site. The bigger those groups are, the slower, more challenging, and less likely the SN2 reaction will occur. In general, methyl and primary leaving groups can undergo rapid SN2 reactions. The secondary leaving groups undergo pretty sluggish SN2 reactions, but they can occur. And tertiary leaving groups don't really undergo SN2 reactions at all. Similar arguments can be made about the nucleophile. The bigger the nucleophile, the slower the SN2 reaction. One final aspect of the SN2 reaction is worth mentioning now. It's stereochemistry. By virtue of the way the frontier molecular orbitals, that is the homo of the nucleophile and the lumo of the electrophile, need to overlap, the nucleophile must collide with the electrophile on the carbon side of the carbon leaving group bot. You'll commonly hear this referred to as backside attack because the nucleophile attacks the electrophile from the back side of the leaving group, kicking it out. The implication of this is that the groups attached to the carbon, the groups that don't leave, do a sort of umbrella flip as the reaction occurs. This always happens in every SN2 reaction, but it usually doesn't make much of a difference. But if the leaving group happens to be attached to a stereogenic carbon, sometimes called a chiral center, then an SN2 reaction inverts the stereochemistry at that site. The configuration of that site. We'll explore this in more detail in a future video. For now, you should remember that SN2 reactions require good leaving groups and strong, usually anionic nucleophiles. They are very sensitive to sterics, big is bad, and they proceed with inversion of configuration.